to Arvon Home uh, after a break of over a month. How about that? Uh, I'd had a few weeks away from the layout and I've uh, been working back on it over the last week or so. Uh, and uh, bring you up to date with a number of things that I've been doing and also show you uh, a new uh, locomotive which I acquired on a whim. Uh, but first of all, in response to the last video, a bit more about the, the DAPOL Easy Shunt uh, coupling converter kit. In the last video, you may recall that I fitted some of the uh, DAPOL Easy Shunt couplings to some Pico wagons uh, because I want to use the Easy Shunt couplings for uh, shunting work up at High Elven. Uh, and in response to that, I had a number uh, of um, people asking about fitting the, whether I thought the, the coupling kit could be used on older Graham Farish or Minitrix or Lima wagons. Uh, and as it happened, I didn't realise, I, I thought I had a Lima wagon, which someone kindly gave me. But in among uh, my stock of freight wagons, I found uh, a Graham Farish a pool Graham Farish wagon uh, and started to have a go at changing that. Now what I'm going to do here, I'll just put a short piece of video uh, which I took just before I started this showing that these three wagons, the coupling heights are all the same on all of them, uh, which just to give you comfort that the kit that comes from DAPOL, if you do your work uh, properly on the wagons, you can get the coupling height so they're all level and coupling together. Uh, these two wagons you've seen before, that was the one that I was working on in the last video. That was the first one that I did, just to check <laughs> that it worked. And this is an old Graham Farish box van, um, which I thought, well, let's have a look and see whether I can fit uh, the coupling on it. And it proved to be a lot more work, but as you can see, it is possible to do. Um, in fact, I did put things at both ends, but I discovered, uh, as always, just after the glue had dried, that this end wasn't properly filed down, so the coupling was pointing down, which was my fault entirely. Uh, it was the right height, but just at an angle. So that's got to be um, put right. I did have to do quite a bit of uh, change to this, because if I bring this up to the camera, Originally, the old mount, this was a single piece of plastic through here, and the old mount sat on this part uh, and obviously came up and was quite big and chunky. And it took quite a bit of clipping off to do. So depending how much you want to mutilate your wagons to put easy shunt couplings, uh, but it was, you know, I could do it. You can't remove the van, the body from the uh, underframe because as you can probably see, these are effectively, well, they're not quite rivets, but they're, they're obviously plastic that's been set in and then cleaned off uh, after, the glue, after whatever glue had, had dried on them. But it was, you know, it just took a bit of time with some um, uh, narrow files to be able to file this down because it, it sat proud originally of the frames that are either side and you, you had to bring it down as, as much as that to get the coupling to sit at the right height. So it took quite a bit of work to, to bring that one down. Uh, but on this end, it's done. It's the uh, coupling socket sat on perfectly well. And as you see, it sits at the right height when I put this back on and the other things will couple up to it quite happily. The Lima wagon uh, is a different kettle of fish. Now this wagon, as you can see, I've cleaned one end off uh, and you can see the kind how bulky the coupling is at the other end. And this is not an M pocket. Uh, this is held inside that mount there. Uh, now I've cleaned that off as much as I could clean it off, but that's still too low. Uh, if I try, if I put a pocket on there, the coupling is too low to be able to, to marry up with these. So it would require a lot more work uh, to adjust uh, this Lima wagon. Um, 
and I'm not sure you could do it. That bu uh, buffer was already gone. I, it's not my fault. Um, but you could see how, how easy it would be to end up damaging the, the buffer beam in trying to get, you've virtually got to remove all of that section there. And I just don't think it would be worth the effort, frankly. Uh, now, you may have lemur wagons that are slightly different, but that's my uh, experience on the basis of this and one other lemur wagon I have, which has exactly the same uh, heavy duty coupling mounts uh, on the underframe. I do have another Graham Farish uh, wagon. This one still has pizza cutter wheels. So I think I will adjust this. Uh, this I think is going to be easier if I bring it into shot. This coupling mount looks to be fairly easy to remove. And I think the height will be just right looking at where the coupling sits, if I bring that there. If I remove that and put the pocket on, I think either I'll need to put a shim in to bring the pocket down or the pocket will sit just at the right height. So this wagon will be getting the treatment fairly shortly um, and given some new wheels and brought uh, back into stock, which would be rather good. This also was a gift from, uh, from one of my subscribers. So, uh, so far I'm quite happy with these. You'll see these two wagons again shortly uh, up on the layout because I've put the first magnet in to start uh, working out where they've got to go uh, and also to check that it works. Uh, so what we'll do now I think is go up onto the layout and let me explain to you what I've been doing over the last week since I've returned to working on the layout. At the end of the last video I said that I didn't want to put uh, this next video up until I'd actually managed to get some work done on the layout. And believe it or not I've actually done quite a lot. But it's one of those things where you really can't <laughs> see a lot of it, but never mind. Um, what I have done uh, for this video is put a lot of the buildings back up onto High Elven so we can get an idea of what it's going to look like once all the buildings return. Uh, now, as you'll recall, this is Station Road that runs along here and these buildings are lit. Uh, nothing is lit up here at the moment because I've not wired anything in just yet. But just to get an idea of what it's going to look like for what is just the station area and the main road. Um, I did wonder about moving Station Road to be along the edge along there, but I'm, I, don't, I don't think there's enough room for that to happen. Um, so, but I may put a couple of buildings down that side. The main things that I've been working on is getting the board into its position so that I can um, complete the ballasting and things on top and also uh, fix it finally into position. And that, as ever, turned out to be a much more difficult job <laughs> than I thought it would be. Uh, you'll see under here there is a, an adjustable foot uh, which I used before to hold this into the right height at this side because there was a quite deep bow that was going on. Uh, this is held on battens at, on those two sides. Oh dear, storm. Uh, on those two sides, uh, but is was bowing quite badly in the middle. So that now has been fixed in. But of course, precisely where I needed that to be, was where a lot of this wiring was fixed down with the uh, blocks that are holding all the wires coming in. And also underneath here was the main block drawing all the power from the point motors to take them down below. So a lot of adjusting of various bits of wiring was required. Uh, the other thing that I have been working on uh, is just to get these rewired up. When I took this all apart, they had been wired with some very thin pins, um, which I didn't want to use again. So they all got chopped off. So uh, an, an evening's work with a, a soldering iron has put those right. Uh, and we are now getting to the point where we can start the scenic work on top of here to get this completed so that can be fixed in. Um, and then I can put the uh, the, the uh, rock face into position and also complete the ballasting and work out how the, the mountain side is going to go there. 
I'm going to show you, uh, we're going to go to a running session after this part of the video, and then I'll show you the work that I'm doing on the two portal tunnel entrance that is going to sit here. And then the rock face will go up with the uh, quarry face running round part of the way before going back to the hillside that hadn't yet been taken apart uh, when it was a working quarry. Um, it's been quite good to see these things back on. I've also put in place, though it's the, the track is not connected, the bridge that carries over the train from the branch line. You'll recall those of you that have seen the um, railway before. I mean, it must be must be over a year since the train visited High Auburn Station over the branch. Um, but it, it starts at Weathertop Station over there by the hotel and then wends its way all the way around the uh, layout, crossing over just behind where we are before it wends its way up, up to the branch, up to High Auburn Station. Now all of these buildings uh, are lit, which is why all the wires are all over the place. Uh, and indeed I, got, I had the opportunity, the good shed light that was here stopped working soon after I put it in. Uh, but it turns out that was just a faulty bit of soldering. Uh, because when I was able to test the lamp, once I got the, the buildings off, the, it works fine. And so we will have a properly lit good shed uh, when that's done. One other thing that I've started to do, uh, and I'm, I'm pretty well there, let's move these things out of the way, is just to put the hard standing around where the um, train shed is. I couldn't think what the hell it was called. Uh, so that's in place. There's a piece in there that says yet to go in. I've covered over this hole uh, for the point motor so that I'm able to start putting things on, on top. Uh, and I'm getting close to the point. Once I've got the portal made, I think what I want to do is just work out how this bit goes, first of all, because this is going to be permanent, this part of the hillside. Uh, and then that will help me know how far I need to ballast here beyond the portal entrance. Uh, and we can get this section all the way around up to the entrance to the, um, the main train depot. Uh, ballasted and that will complete the ballasting on this side of the railway uh, and then once I've got my portal built for here I'll do the same over the other side. So work is moving on. We do actually have uh, this part of the layout coming into uh, into its force. I do have to do your recall in the last video that after years of no problem at all uh, suddenly uh, the, the trains, there was no power to this part of the track over here because a, uh, a fish plate or a joint rail joiner had moved and broken contact. So I need to get some power into those parts of the track. That won't be hard because I'll just jump the track with a couple of soldered pieces of, um, of wire because uh, otherwise there's power to everywhere else, but obviously not that section of the track. So what we'll do now, you will have seen just as it goes by, the latest addition to the fleet, um, an unexpected purchase because I saw that DCC Supplies had a new, um, what they call their graded stock. Those of you that have bought DCC Supplies used to be Dapol's repairers. I don't know if they still are. Um, they got rid of all the spare parts to Peter's spares, but they do sell uh, stuff from Dapol, which must have been returned for repair, uh, of varying quality from grade one to grade four. And this is a Hall locomotive. Um, and when I very first started, one of the first engines that I bought was a Hall. Uh, this one is Morton Hall. Uh, and I had terrible trouble with it. Terrible trouble. I couldn't get it to work properly sent back to Dapol, they sent me a replacement, much the same problem, sent it back to Dapol, and at that point I, I had a refund. Uh, now I have loads of Dapol locomotives, most, and I have very little trouble with them beyond the normal things, the very delicate wires that are underneath, the occasional um, traction tyre that um, decides to throw itself, um, which is an interesting job replacing. 
but I, I like Dapol locomotives. Uh, they're, they're beautiful models and all of my Dapol locomotives run very well, he said, touching wood. Um, so I thought, well, it wasn't very expensive, £89 as a grade one uh, return. Uh, so I bought it and it's lovely. The only thing is it is a bit worn in a couple of places around the nameplate. Um, but I'll probably buy a, repla uh, a replacement brass nameplate for it anyway. So that's not an issue. But frankly, unless you're looking at it really close, you can't see it. And I do love the uh, BR lined black uh, colour scheme. So what we'll do now, it's pulling a rake of Holdsworth coaches in um, custard and cream. So I think it's actually pretty prototypical for a GWR, well, sorry, a Western region service in BR times. Uh, so what we'll do, I think, is let uh, have a bit of a running session so you can see these locomotives running around the layout. It occurred to me when I was uh, busy uh, starting to make this portal uh, that it might be useful to show you how I'm going about creating the portal for the uh, tunnel entrance as it comes off the viaduct. Um, it was one of those things where I was sitting thinking, how can I use my time profitably one evening? And started just playing around with bits of um, foam board to see you know, what might a portal look like and how um, was I going to build it? Because although you can have a portal which has you know, a two road entrance, the way the tracks are uh, as it goes round the corner, the tracks actually part uh, and so the gap gets wider as it goes round. And it would just look, I think, odd to have a single portal, a two track portal. And I've always liked this shape of portal, which you'll see for single uh, portal on branch lines more often than not. Uh, so I thought, well, let's go about actually creating um, a double portal a tunnel entrance. And I had a, um, which I bought a while ago from Scale Scenes, their single tunnel portal kit. Uh, but I didn't want to use the Scale Scenes kit because Generally speaking, I'm finding that I like less um, paper-based uh, kits. Um, or if I get a paper-based kit, that I'll do something else with it, putting plastic card or even just 
using painting effects over it um, because I think it actually does give you a proper texture to the walls which it is really hard convincingly in my view to get with um, the paper-based kits it's one of the reasons I really don't buy Metcalf kits anymore um, so uh, but the beauty of it is that the scale scenes kit one of the things it comes with is this template to allow you to decide what type of portal you want to use uh, for your model uh, so I made up the template and using that I was able to put it onto some of this I think this is three inch foam board uh, very useful stuff this um, and to cut out the two portal entrances um, this goes uh, on the layout not long after it comes off the viaduct uh, and I've tested this in situ with uh, all of my biggest engines uh, and my longest coaches all of which happily go through so this I'm happy with this Aha, he said um, and so once it's in place I will build the uh, hillside and the walls and internal walls uh, around it but once I'd got that cut um, I knew I wanted a fascia and I'm using here if I bring it up to the camera there you go I think we're oh, let's go, there we go in focus that's better uh, this is four millimeter brick card which is really um, OO scale but I find on major buildings that works perfectly well at Engage it doesn't look out of place the fire uh, station is built in this this brick card and I've used it on other buildings too um, so I think this will be fine for the kind of heavy brickwork you might get on a, a railway tunnel portal once I'd covered the um, foam in the, in the brick and cut out the portal sides uh, I then wondered worried about the thing which you then need which you have to do of course which is how is this brick arch supported because these bricks in this pattern simply would fall apart it just wouldn't work so I returned to the device that I used uh, on the um, viaduct arches of taking some simple angle this is the 3.2 millimeter angle from uh, evergreen and cutting it so that when I fit this in this happily bends round and goes into place if I get and lines up do the same with this one it takes a little while and a little bit of patience to make all the cuts but what it does give you is a rather nice portal uh, I'm pleased to say um, and obviously this will be painted a different color to the brickwork underneath so I got my basic shape I'd got my portal entrances and then I just wanted to get a bit of relief onto the, the tunnel entrance because it entirely flat just didn't seem to me would, would look very well so what I've been doing so far and that's where I had to stop uh, for a reason I'll explain in a moment was starting to build up so that there's a, a it's got a bit of relief on the uh, on the, the tunnel entrances and that's simply been done by using first of all uh, I put a, a, a thicker piece of um, card to give me a bit of relief and then I wanted to bring that out a bit more so underneath here there is some of this stuff which is one millimeter by 3.2 or 4 mm, can't remember 4 I think uh, which sits underneath there on top of which is another piece of uh, the, the four millimeter card and then built up what would be the side walls that are, f that are going back into the to the hillside again by using the um, evergreen strip styrene uh, and building that up till I've got the height that I needed uh, and finishing it off I, I mean in a way it was a good job that I had to stop because what I now need to do is just cover in where the card where the two bits of card uh, come together and I've I've gone back to a, a thing which I've done 
and used many times before from York Model uh, Railroad, York Model Rail, these stone coins, uh, which come in long strips. They fold in half and then you can fit them along the edge there and that will, prov that will cover over that join. Here I've put some of the um, Vallejo plastic putty. Uh, I've yet, I've got to just clean that up because it's, I've just left that to dry and generally wipe off the stuff that I don't need because I'm almost at the point, well I am at the point with this where I can now go on and paint this first with a, an undercoated primer, let that dry completely. And then I think, I think I want this to be a quite darkish colour. I don't think I want this kind of brick red. Uh, so I'll make me mind up about what the what the colour will be. A, probably a bluey grey colour, which I'll then weather on top. Uh, this is going to be stone, um, as will the coins. So the coins and the brick arch will be the same colour but and contrasting with the surrounds. Uh, the thing I have to do finally is to put a proper lintel or portal capstone across the top here uh, and despite having a substantial pack of strip styrene of course I didn't have the strip styrene that was the right width I do now which is some of the 6.3 millimeter strip styrene I'll show you this kind of width I, I want to make my mind up what thickness um, I use so I've got uh, a range from uh, 0.51 uh, millimeter and 0.75 millimeters and I probably will put one large piece on and then a piece of this width running down the center just to give it a, a, a look um, and then once that's on the layout I will be deciding how I put internal walls in for a certain way so that you don't just see as you're looking through this portal you see the train coming round because the idea would be that these are two separate tunnels that have to run off in slightly different directions as the train traverses around the corner. Uh, so that just brings you up where I am with this uh, and how I've gone about constructing it and hopefully by the next video you will see this in its final state. Well as you can see I've put in the tunnel portal in its uh, unfinished state uh, where it's going to be uh, and the trains are happily going through it. Uh, just so you can see where it's going to be positioned eventually uh, as it comes off the, uh, off the viaduct. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention when I said about the hall uh, is that there is not very much space in the uh, tender where the decoder goes and Dapol indeed say that there's not much space there and recommend uh, the Gagemaster DC23 decoder uh, now I couldn't find any of those around and I kept being pushed in the direction of the DC-93 as the uh, sort of replacement for the, for the 23, which is what I bought, but it's ever so slightly too long. It's about a millimetre or two, so I had to do a bit of work on the inside of the um, tender cover um, to get the space to be able to put everything back together. Now, because this was a, a cheap uh, loco, I was quite happy doing that. But I think if you are going to buy that loco, you'd want to think about buying a very small decoder indeed. It's, there's not much space in that uh, tender. However, I think it's a lovely loco. It runs really well uh, and I'm pleased to have it on the layout. Uh, and with that, that pretty much brings this edition of Elven Home to a close. Uh, I've said to you the things that I'm going to be working on uh, in that far corner uh, really to complete the uh, scenic work on the lower track which I can pretty much do now I think and then complete the stuff on the top and the final bit will be marrying High Elven to the canal and the canal basin below. Um, if you've liked the video please do give it a thumbs up that's always very helpful and if you haven't already subscribed well please do it's free uh, and hit the bell notification so you know when I'm uploading 
And of course, if you've got any comments, please do let me have your comments. It's always good to uh, get feedback on things people have seen or ideas people have. And whole parts of this layout, as I always say, are as they are because of comments that I've received from other people. But until I speak to you again in about a fortnight's time, that's bye-bye from me. Bye-bye.